Welcome to St. Henry High School, where tonight's a special night for the people of St. Henry and for WSN. It's the 100th anniversary of St. Henry basketball, and we are proud to be a part of that particular ceremony this evening. What we'd like to do is begin with a very special interview tonight with the athletic director, uh, excuse me, with the head coach and principal of this particular facility. That would be Eric Rosenbeck and his thoughts on tonight's game and the 100th anniversary. We're here at St. Henry High School with Coach Eric Rosenbeck. Coach, it's the 100th anniversary of basketball here in the community. What are some of the events you got put together for tonight? Uh, we have a lot of alumni coming back. Uh, we have Coach Kneekamp coming back, Coach Summers coming back. Uh, Coach Gilbo will hopefully be here. So um, that takes us all the way back to 1961 as far as coaching at St. Henry. Uh, uh, Robert uh, Bob Bruns is back. Uh, he graduated in 1952 with St. Henry's first 1,000-point scorer. So by my math, he's probably around 88, 89 years old. Uh, so we're going to see if we can get some of those guys on the floor as well as recognize cheerleaders, statisticians, managers, anyone that's been a part of this great program. Coach, you're going to make kind of a presentation. Highlight a little bit of things you want us to talk about with St. Henry basketball tonight. Yeah, I, I want to recognize the people. That's the, that's the biggest thing is, is to have different folks stand up, be recognized. Uh, Coach Gilball, um, we had a fantastic 90-year anniversary. Uh, Brad Evers, Dennis Wendell, and a lot of guys put that together, and it was outstanding. Um, and that was really focused around Coach Gilball and, and, and everything he did for St. Henry basketball. Um, and so tonight we want to kind of continue that, and uh, we think it'll be a really fun night. Coach, you're a Rushi grad, so you knew a little bit about St. Henry basketball, but when you came here, expectations were high. Pressure on you? Yeah, I had canker sores my whole first year <laughs> because I, had, I didn't do a very good job, and I, it still does bother me to this day because we had a, we had a really good class in 2010, and I, and I did not coach them up uh, to, my, to the best of, uh, of what they deserved. And so ever since then, it's kind of uh, motivates me to make sure that I, that I do everything I can to make sure that we can be successful. Um, really high expectations. Community loves basketball. Um, I, I love going to our away games. I love coming to our home games because there's a lot of people at all of them, and, and you don't always see that in 2023. Let's continue with a little bit with that thought because academics, athletics, family, that's really interwoven in this community, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's everything that St. Henry's about. I, I think that's everything that um, this area of basketball is about, whether it be the MAC, uh, Shelby County League, Northwest Conference, WBL, right on down the line. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's definitely a huge part of everything we're trying to do. And then anytime we can get some folks that haven't been here in a while and um, we play great balls of fire right before we start and they say, man, nothing changes, I, I kind of like that. I, I love our gym. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of the new gyms, and they're very nice. But if anybody would ever ask me my opinion, I would say keep this gym as long as I'm here. It's fantastic. It's a perfect environment. Um, and, and I love our home fans. I, I have been here before. It can get loud in that yes. facility. <laughs> yeah, yes, it can. We, we've had a few. Um, it's not quite like the you know the early '90s or, or late '80s all the time. But every once in a while, if we get a, a, a feisty player from the other side, or the officials aren't exactly what a, what the home fans think should be happening, uh, they'll let you know. There's some officials who wear red and white in this gym sometimes, aren't there? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, your your team is nine and nine. Very young basketball team coming off a good win last night. Now you've got a quality opponents tonight in Van Wert. Yeah, they're they're maybe the most athletic team we've seen all year. Rushi is really, really athletic. Marion's very athletic, but they're right up there with them. Uh, so we're definitely going to have to be fundamental in everything we do. Uh, if they turn us over, they're getting out in transition. We let Pratt get in the front of the rim. Uh, it's going to be a long night for us. So uh, we're definitely ready for the challenge and um, it gets you ready for tournament. And you have just one senior. Your young guys are coming around for you. Yeah, they're, they've been fantastic all year, and, and I've challenged them as much as any group I've had because I think that their ceiling is a lot higher than we've shown. Um, it's been frustrating at times, but then you got games like last night and last week versus Fort Recovery uh, where it feels like it's starting to come together. So if, if we can string another one tonight, that would be a really, really big deal for us as we head toward tournament. Coach Eric Rosenbeck from St. Henry. It's a special night here. It's the 100th anniversary of high school basketball. We're proud to be a part of it, glad to be a part of it. Coach, thanks for giving us your time. Good luck this evening. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks very much, Coach Rosenbeck, for that uh, synopsis of what we're going to see this evening, both in the ceremony and from his particular basketball team and St. Henry this evening. We'd like to bring in Darren Gilbert. Now, Darren, kind of an interesting matchup in a non-conference game. Yeah, two very well-coached teams, two records that are very deceiving. Uh, it's been a non-conference battle for many, many years. It's been nip and tuck as far as victories for each ball club. Uh, right down 127. It's going to be very competitive. It's going to be interesting to see the matchups. You know, looking at the, the box scores, they're very similar in virtually every category. So 
it's, we're, I think everybody here is going to be in for a, a fine uh, dandy contest. Let's go through Van Wertz and their starting lineup. They are 11-7 on the season after a win over Kenton last night. They will go with zero. Nate Phillips, 6'3", senior, 6.1 points per game, 3.6 assists. Number four is Luke Wessel, 6'2", senior at 9.8. Number five is Carson Smith, 6'3", senior at 9 points per game. Ten is Garrett Gunther, 6'0", senior, 7.1 points per game, 5.6 assists. And 15 is Aiden Pratt, 6'4", senior, 19.8 points per game and 9 rebounds. Eric Rosenbeck's team, they are 9-9 nine and nine, thanks to win over Delphi St. John's last night, 5-3 and three in the MAC. They will go with number four, Caden Bergman, 5'11", junior, 7.1 points per game. Five is Evan Bauer, 6'2", junior, 16.3 and 7.8 rebounds. 11, Logan Link, 5'10", junior, 3.1 points per game. 24 is Luke Beike, 6'4", junior, 16.6, 4.8 rebounds for him. And the only senior in the starting lineup for Coach Rosenbeck, 33, John Hardings. He is a 6'3", senior, averaging 5.5 points per basketball game. Van Wert scores it at 57.3. They give up 49.9. St. Henry scores it at 57.9. They give up 57.3. Our starting laps are in the books. We're going to be back with a tip-off right after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry High School, where our scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They are hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com and apply today. Mark Shine, Darren Gilbert. There, we got starting laps going on right now. Interesting enough, we asked both coaches, you know, keys to the game tonight, and both of them said rebound the basketball. Rebound the basketball and get the loose balls is going to be more important tonight, too. Give each team one possession and one possession only. St. Henry looking ways to reduce the number of turnovers that they've had throughout the course of the season. And Van Wert says, you know, we got to take St. Henry out of their strengths. Our officials this evening will look this way. We have Jeff Harvey, Anthony Rogers, and John Hines this evening. And jump ball will be John Hardings, and he will go to the center circle with Aiden Pratt. One of my favorite gyms, Darren. Well, I'll tell you loud. what, it filled up a and lot within the last 20 minutes, hasn't it? Did it, did it, that ball is tipped into the backcourt. This will go to Wessel, and he will hand the basketball off to Garrett Gunter. It's man-to-man. -man. This is Phillips. Man, we're in their row, uh, traveling red uniforms. This is Wessel for three out of the corner. Short, rebound Pratt, and Aiden Pratt, who had 31 last night, starts off with a basket in this game in the first 20 seconds. Yeah, he, he's putting up some huge numbers, and if he gets off to a start like that, this will be a three bound on the corner. That one is long by Link, and it will stay with St. Henry. Good look there for St. Henry. Congratulations to Aiden Pratt, who this week committed to the University of Finley to play football next year. Yeah, we were talking about that. You know, I think they got a steal. The it's numbers a kick he puts out, up. jump shot, bounces around short, tipped up by Hardings, and who hit it out of bounds? Harding's knocked that one out of bounds. Good effort by both ball clubs there going for the loose ball. Well, I heard you and uh, Danny Holbrook talking today that uh, when the, the kid from Bath went to Finley, he became a Division I basketball player. And, and I think, you know, that could happen with Aiden Pratt. He's going to go to Finley and have a great career there. All the way to the rim, right-handed finish inside goes for Garrett Gunter. Yeah, good job. And Alex. a steal. Nope. Not a steal. Take it back by Bowers. This is Harding's in the corner. He looks inside. He's trying to post up Bikey. Then they have to come back outside to Evan Bowers. Bowers was a six man on the basketball team last year and really improved his numbers. Good steal. Nate Phillips got inside to play that one. A full oh, court what bounce, a bounce pass. pass. What a play and a finish by Wessel. Six early points. Van Wert. Holy smokes. He, th he threw that on a dime. Off a full court bounce pass, spin move inside, finishes by Evan Bowers. That's the improvement the young man has shown hit over his overall game, finishing. Here's a pass that'll go cross court and a finish inside. That's by Casey Carson Smith. They've got four different players with a basket due to Cougars. Well, more importantly, they're sharing the ball. Long three, bounces out. That shot was taken by Logan Link. Cougars in a hurry. 
Wessel works inside. Phillips, pass inside. Pratt, muscle up inside. He's got four. His team's got ten in the first two minutes. Couple big assists right there by Phillips. Here's a wraparound pass that goes inside, and Hardings can't finish. Rebound comes to Bowers. His short jumper will go. Evan Bowers has all four Redskins points. And the pace is frantic right now. Phillips, another bounce pass. Another finish inside. Smith again. Phillips Boy. with another assist. He averages 3.6 assists per game. He's got that right now. This is number 11 is Logan Link. He gets the ball down into the corner. Bergman gets a shot off. Rebound. Here comes Smith. Pass it ahead, Pratt. Pratt. Oh, what a spin move. move. Wow, six for him. You know, I had him early in the season when they were not in basketball shape. What a difference these kids for Van Wert. They're starting to get their legs underneath them, and you can tell by their physical Look play. Shove in the back that time as Evan Bowers was trying to get offensive rebound position. I'm just thinking, Darren, how many basketball games have we seen on Saturday night over the years where it starts slow? Everybody plays on Friday night. That is not the case right now. No. Here comes Curtis Putoff into the game. Here comes uh, Hayden Beckman into the game. Here comes Devin Delseth into the game. And I think I missed somebody. Who else did we get? He went depth, I can tell you that oh, much. We got Nicholas Burke into the basketball game as well. I think Van Wert brought in an A.J. Prophet. So kind of wholesale changes with the absolute pace of the first three minutes of this one. This will be a three ball by Wessel out of the corner. Here's Prophet getting a rebound right away, making his presence felt. Well, oh, a heads up play by Prophet sure to save was. that one. Pratt. And it was a tipped, it was. Knocked out of bounds by Delson. Yeah, one thing AJ does very well is he is he can shoot the basketball from deep from any position on the floor beyond that three-point arc. Had two last night. Gunter goes to the rim and has it knocked out of bounds? Nope, he did not hit it last. Pretty good hands there by St. Henry. It appeared to be number three, Curtis Putoff, getting his hands in there, getting the deflection. Putoff right here. Pass goes to the wing to Delseth. Long three. Splash. Chalk that one up for Putoff. He has 11 of those now on the season. And a high pass sails over the head of A.J. Prophet. Here comes Nate Phillips back into the game. And this is how Coach Lodick does it. He just substitutes one guy at a time and tries to keep fresh bodies in playing six. Yeah, trying to keep the continuity together and the flow, pace of the game. That's two turnovers in a row for Van Wert. All six of those guys are seniors, too. Brookie corner pass. Another three ball. That's back to back by that young yeah. man. Curtis put off, averages two and a half points a game. He's got six in about 30 seconds. Bounce pass is stolen. Good play, Delson. Here we go the other way. And Phillips gets back to knock it out of bounds. Excellent job right there by Phillips getting back, getting his hands on that, getting the deflection out of bounds. Beckman, corner pass. This is the guy who just drilled a couple of threes. The pass goes inside. Berkey, he's working on Pratt. Pratt gets a block shot. He's averaging better than two blocks a game. Here's a long pass, and that one goes just a bit long. Coach Lodge just says, we turned the ball over four times in a row. Yep. Which they have, but they've been pushing the pace, and <laughs> it's kind of hard to, you know. First, sometimes, first some, six yeah. possessions was an assist yeah. in a bucket, you know. <laughs> Obviously, you want to cut down on those, but you're going to have more when you play an up-tempo game. Here comes Pratt after a steal. Two on one. Phillips down the lane. Tried to dunk it and missed. Got caught in between. Yep, that's one where you got to use the backboard and get it up on the glass and let it be your friend. Corner pass, pass inside. This is a baseline move by Bikey. 
And he's going to keep working until he gets a floater in the lane. Luke Bikey has a basket. Good job keeping the patience right there, yeah. getting, gathering and scoring. Seems like it wasn't long ago. It was 14-4. Phillips trapped. And what? Held ball. Arrow favors the Redskins. Yeah, that's a no-no, bringing the basketball up and bringing it up and pulling up at half court with it. That's going to go down for another turnover for Van Wert. Lincoln Bowers back in the basketball game. I'm out of breath watching them play. Goodness. Makes two of us. Yes, they are. Talk about some intensity in this one. Link. Skip pass. Put off. Going to the rim this time. Reverse layup. Tip. See who they got. They're going to get foul. Bowers had a tip with the ball. I'm foul wondering goes to Wessel. The shot. They going to call it on the shot? Nope. Going to call it out of bounds. Official signal. He grabbed his jersey. That was really close on the tip. It was. If it's controlled, it's a shot. Here's a lob into the middle. Bikey working. Short jumper for him. Bowers working inside, but Bowers hit it out of bounds. Gunter gets it in bounds to Pratt. A little 2-2-1 zone press. Gunter gets through it. And trapped. Looking, looking. Wessel's going to go baseline. Pratt into the lane, left-handed finish. You know, there are nights, Darren, he is the best offensive player I've seen all year. You know, I'm, chuck the lane. I'm sitting here chuckling a little bit, but he covers so much ground exactly. with his length, and he's just so physically strong with the ball. Well, he might have eight, but so does Carson put off, or Curtis put off. This is a typical St. Henry Van Wert play. See about four guys on the floor trying to fight the ball loose. And look at the sportsmanship being displayed yes, by both ball clubs, helping one another up. Harding's back into the game. Bergman back in the game. Phillips back in the game. Skip pass. Profit secures it in the corner. Wessel. Jumper out of the corner, short. Oh, somebody may have got away with a push there. <laughs> think so? <laughs> we <laughs> saw it, but I don't think anybody sure else flying did. out of there. <laughs> Here's Bergman. Here pass back court. Another nice pass oh, inside yes. to Harding. Boy, the passing has been outstanding by both teams here in the opening quarter. This will be a three out of the corner by Profit. His 15 three-point field goal splashes. It's 19-16 visitors. Yeah, he's as good as anyone on the court. And he got a steal. Profit to the rim. And bounces it in. Five for him in the opening quarter. It's 21-16. He hits a three, Mark. Here come back just like that and make another play. He just, he get, everything is off the, the first couple shots. If they're in, he's on for the evening. And Phillips is going to get called for a reach and swat foul out front. His second. Excuse me, the team second, his first. Quick first quarter, huh? Oh, my goodness, what a quarter. You know what we need, Darren? We need a shot clock. You know, this game is so slow. and I'm laughing, but <laughs> <laughs> Coach Rosenbeck just said, we got to play faster. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness, yeah. That's what I'm Looking thinking. Looking inside. Here comes off a screen, comes Bikey. His shot doesn't go. Fighting for the rebound and securing it with Smith. And after a very energetic opening quarter, Van Wert will take a 21-16 lead to the break. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We didn't have a free throw in the opening quarter. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken is our free throw sponsor tonight in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
Well, they had a big ceremony tonight. We're going to show you a little bit of the footage that was taking place this evening. There were four coaches here tonight. Those coaches have been here since 1962. Eric Rosenbeck, the current coach, Joe Niekamp, Al Summers, Fran Gilbo, who came here in 1962. Good to see all those people here. They introduced the players who played for them, and then they introduced Bob Bruns from way back in 1952, became the very first 1,000-point scorer in school history. Good to see those gentlemen here this evening, and they did a wonderful job of having a pregame ceremony tonight. And we had an incredible first quarter. 21 on the board for Van Wert, 8 of them by Pratt, 16 for St. Henry, Eight of them by Curtis Putoff, and it will be St. Henry basketball to start quarter number two. Russell bumps Burke Key off the block or the elbow. Baseline move, spinning inside, good pass, and a good finish inside. That will go, yeah. Got him on the arm or somebody else, not quite sure. Burke is going to get the basket and and one opportunity. Pratt gets his first foul, the team's third. Again, our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Nice head and shoulder fake draw on that contact on Pratt. Good, good catch in the lane with all the traffic. That free throw doesn't go, and Phillips secures the rebound. And right away, San Henry goes to their 2-2-1 press off a missed free throw. Pratt secures the tip pass. Pratt, kick out to Gunter. And they've gone from that 2-2-1 two, two, zone press to a 2-3 zone. Kind of matching out of it. Pratt from the free throw line. Line drive shot, he's got 10. Nice touch. He had 31 last night to get Kenton. He's got 10 already here and we played nine minutes. Pass inside, this is Bikey down inside. His spin moves on Phillips and his shot won't go. Gunter rebounds. It's three on two the other way and he bounced passes to, goodness. Pratt went high thinking he could dunk it. Couldn't quite get that high and still laid it over the rim. 12 for him on a good pass. Harding's working baseline. Here's a jumper out of the corner. Wessel rebounds. This will be Phillips for three out of the corner. Good check out on the backside by Berkey to get the rebound. Exceptional box out. There's put off. Seen this movie before. He's got three of those in the game and 11 points. Twenty-five, twenty-one. Wessel in the lane. Spin move. Left-handed shot. Can't go against Berkey or Bikey. Who rebounds. Yeah, did a nice job. I think he got a piece of it. There's Berkey trying to get to the rim. His shot overshoots the rim. Pratt gets the rebound. And Pratt says, "You know what? I think it's time to walk it up the floor. What a pace we've had early on." This is Profit. Oops. Good bounce pass. Oh, How about the zone execution. offense? Wessel gets loose in the middle of, at the lane on the left side, and Pratt found him. I thought they were going to profit in the corner and did not. Was that tipped out of bounds? It was not. Lots of guys back in the game who have played before. One who is not is Caden Schaefer, who wears number two for the Van Wert Cougars. He is a 5'8 junior. I think that kind of shows you the pace of the game. Coach went to his first non-senior because the game is going so fast. This is Schaefer right here with the basketball. He finds Pratt again. Foul line jumper. And in the scramble for the rebound. Comes a put off. He's off to the races. And the rim. Unable to finish though is Bowers. He'll go to the free throw line. The pace has not slowed down. <laughs> no, it has not. Gary it just Gunter. hasn't. Evan Bowers, who averages 16.3 points per game, is a 61% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, he's taken his game to the next level, Mark. You know, watched him a couple times last year and played the sixth, seventh man role and 
He's come a long ways. He's got five in the game, looking at six. A little bit hard that time. Good rebound by Gunter from the second lane spot. And we're going to get a foul that will go against St. Henry. That goes to Hayden Beckman. His first team's at second tonight. There's Gunter looking at this zone situation they have. Kind of a matchup. One, two, two. Passing guys off. Phillips. Gunter with the basketball. Pratt. Nice pass ends up in Gunter. Sure was. Hands. Phillips kissed in the middle. This will be a shot by Schaefer. A little long. Rebound, however, Smith. His jumper won't go. But tip loose. Nice play that time by Schaefer to tip it to Pratt. He's sure got 14 was. now. Pikey trying to get to the rim. And Pratt's going to pick up his second foul. That's not good if you're Coach Laudick. No, his position was excellent, but he got caught with the, with the reach. Yeah, that will bring Luke Wessel back in the game. Let's see if he takes Pratt's place. He does. Aiden Pratt sits down with 14 points, and we have played not quite 12 minutes of this one. Baseline jumper, Bowers, spins out, rebounds Gunter. He's got bodies behind him, and he lost the basketball. Good pressure from behind. Put off. He's going to pull up again. Yeah, that's one where he's like, who's going to guard me? You know, if you're not going to guard know? me and I've got three frees, I'm going to make a fourth one. See where the points come from now with Pratt sitting on the bench. Good point. They lead by four. They've got other capable scores, but obviously you certainly want to have Aiden Pratt in the game if you can. Here's Phillips working the lane, bounce pass Wessel, and Wessel spins one off the glass. Well, I'd like to have the assist count for those guys tonight. Like, well, they had, at the end of the first quarter, Mark, they had six. Hayden Beckman was headed to the rim. He was defended by Caden Schaefer and lost the ball out of bounds. Pratt's going to come back in, and as he does, so does Luke Beike. I forgot that uh, Paul was going to keep passing the numbers, didn't give you a chance to, get, to read them off. They had six assists in the opening quarter. Yeah, six assists. Wow. With, well, the five turnovers, you know, towards the end didn't help matters allowing St. Henry back in the game. But, yeah, six turnovers, eight on, eight rebounds, shot 71%. That's a pretty doggone good quarter. The numbers were good for the, for the team wearing white, too. Get to some of those numbers. 41% on twos, two threes, seven attempts, four rebounds. Three turnovers, three assists. Pratt goes into the lane and goes up and scores over everybody. He's got eight in each quarter now for 16. Here's put off to the rim. He about spun that in. Mikey gets a rebound and steals it away and scores. I'll tell you what, they're going after it at both ends for that basketball when it comes off the glass. mikey has got four in the game. He averages 16.6. Here's Gunter, pass baseline. Smith off glass. There's another assist. Carson Smith's got six. Bowers. Trying to get to the lane. Jumper. Phillips rebounds. Nate's in a hurry. Throws it to Pratt. Phillips cuts right down the lane and lost the basketball trying to go up. Well, out the other way, but unable to finish in transition was Logan Link. Here's a pass to Phillips. And this time he goes up, and he challenges Luke Beike and gets a basket and a foul. Luke Beike picks up the foul. We're going to get a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima Wapak and Delphus free throw. The attempted three-point play. This will be the first free throw in the basketball game for the Van Wert Cougars. Phillips 
shoots about half of his in on the season, but yeah, that one bounced out on him. I thought it was good, but he left his hand. And right to the rim, put off. Gunter couldn't rebound under traffic. This will be a three ball that'll go up for Bergman. Big shot by that young man. Caden Bergman now has 14 threes on the season. It's a seven point Cougar lead. Here's Wessel. Phillips. And we're gonna get a foul that will go against Logan Link as he went after the basketball as did Caden Schaefer. That's one of those if he goes with the inside hand, I think, Mark, towards the defender on that pass. I don't think the official can call that foul. Logan Link becomes the fourth Redskin to have a single foul in the opening half. This will be profit to inbound. There's a three that'll go up from Smith. Carson Smith, nine points. 19 three-point field goals on the season. Got number 40, Dominic Schwartz in the game for the first time for St. Henry. I think they played 10 guys. As Coach Rosenbeck got too far into the basket, and Profit runs the ball down. Good hustle there in that loose ball. Coach Laudick wants last shot. He's got a set called anyway. There's Profit in the corner. Profit's going to get a deep three. Missed it, but the rebound on the backside, and Wessel puts it in. Wessel has eight. Plays so hard. It's a 12-point lead for Van Wert. St. Henry's going to play last shot and try to regroup in the locker room. A little floater on the baseline that did not go for Bikey, but with 3.3 left, it was knocked out of bounds by Van Wert. That's a good coaching move. Get Pratt out, Darren. Yes. He's the only player in the game with two fouls. He's going to get a chance to not pick up number three. This will be a fake and a three that will go up and rebound on the backside by Profit, and we have had a very entertaining opening half. We've got halftime festivities coming up in just a moment, but right now it's Van Wert 42 at St. Henry 30. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. It's halftime here at St. Henry High School. Van Wert with a 42-30 lead as a part of our halftime festivities this evening and the 100th anniversary of basketball here in Van Wert. Got a chance to talk with Kevin Niekamp, a player on two state championships teams here at St. Henry, and here are his thoughts coming up right now. We're back at St. Henry High School. We've got Kevin Niekamp with us. Kevin, 100th anniversary of basketball here. You played on the 90 championship team. That was kind of the first one in a long time. What was that experience like? I tell you what, it, it, it brings up uh, bring, brings back so many memories just walking in this gym. Uh, it's been about 30 years or so. Uh, it was an incredible experience, incredible run. Uh, what's really cool about this night is we have a few old coaches that are here with us tonight. We've got Fran Gilbo, who was my coach. Yeah. Uh, we also got Al Summers. Yeah. He took the uh, 1999 team to the state uh, final game. And then Joe Niekamp as well is here and he won a state championship for us. So you, you win a state championship in 1990, and then you come back in 91. Pressure on you that year? Oh yeah, we had a little pressure. We had that bullseye on us for sure, but uh, I tell you what, we had a great nucleus of players. Uh, I played with guys from the kindergarten on up, so we kind of knew what everybody was doing on the court at all times, because we've been playing together so long. So it was, it was tough, it was a lot of pressure, but you know, we, we ended up being a winner that year, too. Kevin, you know, you talk about St. Henry, and really throughout the MAC, it's a family experience. Do you hang around with your buddies anymore from those teams? you get a chance to see them? Oh, absolutely. We've got a few of the guys that are in town yet, uh, and we do have some that are out of town, obviously. But uh, a lot of times we try to connect with each other when, you know, if I'm in Columbus and uh, we got guys from Columbus like Bob Hoyne and, 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 and some of those guys. Steve Gells is down in Cincinnati. Uh, we 
Scott High Camps in Columbus. So, yeah, we do get together from time to time. Just kind of one final question. I asked Coach Rosenbeck this. In your community, athletics, academic, family, they're all an important part of this community, aren't they? Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, a great uh, academic program here. The school's always rated really high. Uh, that's what brought me back to St. Henry 20, 25 years ago. You know, I lived in Columbus initially, and uh, you, you, you can't ever – how do you want to say it? I, I just didn't want to miss this experience with my kids growing up here like I did. So. And, and you've had kids play in this building, haven't you? Yeah, we sure. I sure have. Uh, Zach and, and Lucas and Olivia, my oldest daughter, played a little basketball as well. So, uh, yeah, a lot of good memories. They're they're pretty much all done and out now. So now I've got nieces and nephews coming up to watch. So. There you go. It's a family event. Kevin, thanks for being a part of this. Congratulations on the 100th anniversary. It's a great thing here in the community. Oh, I'm glad you guys can be here. and witness this special event. Thank you. Kevin Niekamp, St. Henry, the 100th anniversary. We'll be back with a second half action after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Mark Schein, Darren Gilbert. Fanwork Cougars have run out to a 42-30 lead here at halftime. Darren, you have some stat numbers thanks to Paul Hemmelgarn. What did they say? Yes, Mr. Hemmelgarn, thank you very much. First half numbers for Van Wert Cougars. 20 of 31 from the field, 64%. Three-point attempts, eight, converting two for 25. No free throws, 20 rebounds. Five of those coming at the offensive end, 15 defensive for a total of 20. 12 assists, four steals, only six turnovers, five in the first quarter, much better job in the second. Uh, five bench points, eight second chance points, and six points off turnovers. St. Henry right now 12 of 32 for 37%, shooting a very respectable five of, of 12 from beyond the arc for 41 one of four to Charity Stripe for 25%. 20 rebounds, six on the offensive end, six on the defensive end, six assists, three steals, six turnovers, and probably the big discrepancy is they have 16 points off the bench to Van Wards, five, 10 second half points, and six points off turnovers. Thank you very much for coming through with those, uh, Darren. Part of those 16 bench points, Curtis Putoff has 14 to lead the scoring parade for St. Henry this evening. He has four three-point field goals and 14 points, five for Evan Bowers and three other players. Four other players have scored. For the Van Wert Cougars, Aiden Pratt has 16, nine for Carson Smith, eight for Luke Wessel. They've had three other players score as well. 21 and 21 quarter scores for Van Wert. 16 and 14 for St. Henry, and we are in the second half action. Baseline jumper, this shot's gonna go up. It will not go in, but Pratt went high for the rebound, but going even higher was Evan Bowers. We'll go the other way. This will be a three out of the corner by Bergman. Here's Bowers gets another rebound, and it was knocked out of his bounds, out of his hands, but goes out of bounds off of Evan Bowers. And he went up in the air a couple times. Went after it, didn't he? It's that 2-2-1 zone press they've used throughout the basketball game. It'll slow you down a little bit. And Evan Bowers was a little bit tardy getting to the, a steal. Ran over Nate Phillips for our first foul of the second half. Phillips did a good job coming back to the basketball or coming towards it. Because if he doesn't, I think Bowers gets him a steal right there. Evan Bowers, the... First player for the St. Henry team to have two personal fouls. Aiden Pratt has two, but got out of the opening half without picking up a third. And that one sails into the corner and almost took a cheerleader's life. Yeah, I'm not so sure yeah. where that one was going to go. Well, I think what happened, he had a guy cutting in the, in the corner and he went back cut and they just kind of miscommunicated. and. Those types of things happen, and we're in second half play. We're almost a minute into it without a score, and that's a novelty in this game. Here's Bowers coming off the screen. Here's back cut for them, and going up and scoring through traffic is Bergman. He's got five in the game now. Nice pass, nice finish there. The vision that both teams have had this evening has been good. Here's Phillips. 
And now Gunter into the corner. Smith goes inside to Wessel. And now Phillips out on top. 10 point Cougar lead. Phillips will cut through the zone, head to the baseline. Pratt posts up. Well executed play. And oh, Smith can't get it to go though. Was that Wessel? I yeah, I believe it was Wessel. Wessel. Yeah. Here's a three out of the corner. And Wessel gets that one, pass ahead. And this will be a finish at the rim for Carson Smith. He becomes a double figure scorer with 11. Skip pass. Bikey looks in. This is Bikey right here. Went and skips it around. This is Hardings. Here's a deep three. Pratt tips the rebound to himself. Long arms went and got it. And makes a move to the goal. Phillips kicks it back out top, and this is Wessel. Wessel goes off glass. Nope, tipped around. Rebound comes to Logan Link at 5'10. He's pushing in a hurry. Bergman goes to 17 feet for a jumper and makes it. Nice soft touch. Could have set him for the three for a good shot. Decided to play for a great shot. Caden Bergman has all four points in the quarter for St. Henry. The lead stays at 10. Phillips. Pratt thought about three. Instead goes to 15 feet, and oh, it rolled out. Those toilet bowl ringers just wouldn't Ooh. stay down. Here comes the hockey line shift from St. Henry. Thinks the same thing it did in the opening half. Make four substitutions. Luke Beike is the only person who started in the second half who stayed on the floor for the Redskins. This is put off who had the big opening half. Where's number three? He's got four threes. A little jump hook in the lane, and that was a nice shot by Luke Beike. A basket nice. each quarter night for six for him. Sorry. Really? No, really good first step getting to the rim and protecting the ball. High and soft. Gunter into the lane. This is Pratt. He goes up from 15. That one was hard and rattled out on him. Last one rolled around. Yeah. This one bounced hard. He's right on, just can't get him to drop. Eight point lead, Cougars. They have just a single basket here in the first four minutes of quarter number three. Here's a left handed push shot out of the corner, and that one rattles out. Hard rims tonight, maybe. Beckman couldn't get that one to fall. Gunter into the lane, a little floater for him, and that will roll in. Gunter's got four. Timeout. Timeout, Van Wert. Timeout, WSN. You're watching high school basketball, WSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Coach Laudick takes his first time out there. In fact, first time out of the game. First, yeah, first time out of the game. That's right, partner. You know, it, 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 I'm curious just to see what this type of victory tonight will do for the RPI coming yeah. out tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? For the tournament draw. RPI for either team. No yeah, matter for who, either wins, team. who wins the basketball game. Yeah, it's RPI, of course, is how we're determining the seeding position this year in the tournament. Not by coach's vote in Northwest Ohio. That all takes place tomorrow. Of course, we've got our selection show coming up Wednesday night. Back cut, but it's stolen. Good play that time defensively by Carson Smith. Nine o'clock on Wednesday nights, you can catch our tournament preview show. And who hit that one out of bounds? I think number 10 hit it. Is that correct? Yes, what they said. Hey, Beck would hit it. They were pointing for trying to figure out who it was. It was him. Panel of experts and me on Wednesday night. Couldn't find anybody <laughs> more knowledgeable, so I get to go out there and do that. That will be a fun event. Schaefer tries to get in the lane, has to give it back up. 
Profit gets a three look, and he nails a three ball. Second three for him tonight. He's got eight in the game. Back at you, a three. That one will come from Evan Bowers. He's got eight, and the sh shooting continues to be good this evening. Yeah, he's been very quiet, but he's starting to heat up for the Redskins. So the lead stays at 10. Caden Schaefer checked in a moment ago. His pass goes inside, and Pratt scores his first basket of this half. Really nice on the slip screen right there on the finish after an excellent pass. There's another deep three. I think you could say that Evan Bowers is dialed in right now. Back-to-back -back threes for him gives him 11. That was from the parking lot. Be more aggressive with their press this time. Doing some trap action. That ball is stolen. Midcourt, Delseth. Here's Putoff who had a big opening half. And now Bikey down in the side. He's got a size advantage and just elevates. Bowers rebounds. And he gets it banged off his leg. Yes, it did. Good defensive play that time by Carson Smith to knock it off the leg. Well, it all started with him trying to go inside against Pratt, and Pratt just walled up and took his angle away. And then when he decided to try to kick it out, they did a great job digging down in there and bounced it off his leg. Coach Loudick's going his substitutions two by two in this half, so not everybody's been out except Aiden Pratt. His profit just made that three a moment ago. Schaefer gets a three look out of the corner. Wessel went high for the rebound, but it was hit out of bounds by Putoff off his, his hand. The kid just has a nose for the basketball, whether it be football on Friday nights or during basketball season. He's always around the ball, Mr. Wessel. This is Phillips with the basketball here. Nate bounce passes inside. Pratt elevates and got it blocked that time by Bikey. There's another deep three. A little heat check that time. You missed everything. Yeah, that was a little bit of a rush on Evans' part. The officials who are wearing Van Wert red and gray thought there was contact on the shot last time on the wrist of Pratt. He didn't get that call and head the other way. His team's up by nine. Schaefer finds Wessel in the corner. Here's Pratt on a cut. Schaefer has given us some teams a good minutes tonight. Wessel goes into the lane, finds Pratt in the corner. He ball fakes, goes right to the rim and finishes. He Quick becomes a 20 point, game, 20 point a game score. He did just so well in the air. Mm, great body control. Here's Bikey working on Pratt. And missed that shot. There's Bowers around the rebound. Who hit it out of bounds? Well, I don't know whether you could hear through our microphone or not, but he was challenging Pratt that time. To, and Coach Loudick's yelling from right here, stay down. Straight up, wall yeah, up. He didn't want that third foul and didn't get it either. Good defensive effort. But the ball will stay with St. Henry. Here's Bowers. He's got the two threes in this quarter. And look at another one right here, but they get to him in a hurry on the out-of-bounds play. Got Bowers posted up inside this time. See if that big body goes to work. Spin move, jumper. Nice shot. Wouldn't go. Pratt rebounds. Yeah, did a good job yes. turning away from the double team. Here's Wessel trying to get to the rim. Here's Schaefer. Bounce past Pratt. Good assist for him. What an unselfish play by that young man. Well, if I saw Bikey coming to me, I'd pass to my big guy too. But well done bounce pass. And Pratt with a finish. Six and a quarter for him. Long three. Profit, here's the head man to puck. Get it out in a hurry. Here's Phillips to the rim. His runner bounces in. They're on a roll again. Phillips with four. They pushed the lead to 15 thanks to this flurry of points. Bowers couldn't get a shot off against Wessel, and that will bring quarter number three to an end. Van Wert on a roll at the end of the quarter. They will take a 15-point lead to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry where our free throws today have been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here 
quick look at some stat numbers there. If you got anything that jumps off the page at you. Well, right now I got Van Wert with 18 assists for the game, and that's obviously plays a big part in a 15-point lead. Only taking and committing eight turnovers for the game, 11 second half points, and eight huge points off the bench. And I think that plays a huge part in this 15 point separation. It was a 15 to 12 quarter for Van Wert, thanks to a big flooring at the end. Pratt has 22, Carson Smith with 11, eight, Profit and Wessel on the other side, 14 for putoff. That's what he had at halftime, but 11 now for Bowers. He had six on two threes in that quarter, and it will be Sir Henry basketball here to start quarter four. They've got Bikey down inside. They double him, and he has to bring it back out. Down to him again they go. Bikey works in the lane. Ball fake, goes up, and will draw contact. Really nice, patient move for him. Throw it in, throw it back out, and then draw the foul and go to the free throw line. Yeah, he's really patient, likes to go to that left shoulder or create some space with the left shoulder. Going to get two free throws for that effort. Bikey's an 86% free throw shooter. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. First free throw does not go for him. You know, this is, this is going to be a very dangerous team next year. Splash that one. He's got seven in the game now, does Luke Bikey. Let's see if they got one run in him left here at home. They've been in that press the whole game. Profit for three. Rebound. Logan Link. Pass ahead. Bowers and Profit run it after it. Profit gets it. Two on one. Wessel ball fakes. Goes to Phillips. And there's another assist. What an unselfish play. Phillips has six now in the game. All started with A.J. Profit getting the steal off the fast break effort by St. Henry. Here's Evan Bowers doubled up. And his pass goes awry. Kind of sailed between Bergman and put off. Aiden Pratt returns. And a couple of substitutions also popped off for the bench for Coach Rosenbeck. Sees his train trail by 16. Seven minutes to go. You know, I like what you said early in the game. This is a ball club that's senior dominant, and they're showing it now. The Cougars patient are. possession with a nice lead. And the runner of the lane. Oh. Pratt almost got a long-handed tip in. Said we'll go the other way. bikey has got a teammate on top. Link looks inside. Bikey's one-on-ones with Pratt, about half a helper. Turnaround jumper, battle on the backside, Hardings, and the senior puts it back up and in. John's got four in the game. Good effort going after that And Rosenbeck that takes a timeout. 6.16 to go. St. Henry trying to make one more run. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That scoreboard shows the Van Wert Cougars with 59. The home St. Henry Redskins with 45. And it will be Cougar basketball out of bounds. The Cougars go to a Parkway this week. And then they have St. Mary's, excuse me, St. Henry goes to Parkway on Friday, then they have St. Mary's on Saturday. They finish the season with Bath. And there's a foul. Not many fouls in the second half. This will be just the total third one. Beckman picks up his second. If you're looking for the Van Wert schedule, they have a league games left at Elido and Bath, and then they finish up with Crestview on a Saturday afternoon, a four o'clock game. That'll be an interesting matchup. Always, it always has been, Mark. I mean, very competitive. Kids are what, 10 miles apart, if that? Probably very close friends. Staying in the trap zone, and the pass is a little bit high, but Hayden Pratt, Hayden Pratt still high enough to go oh, get it. What a move. A power move inside gives Carson Smith points 12 and 13. The lead's at 16. Hardings gets a tip loose by Pratt. You know, Pratt had two fouls in the second quarter. He still got two. Smart player. 
Pass goes into the corner. However, Beckman has to go track it down at midcourt. I mean, that has to hurt when you square up into that chest of that young man. Good defensive play by Carson Smith to disrupt the interior pass and knock it out of bounds. I mean, kids are always taught to play with their chest. If anybody plays with their chest, it's Mr. Pratt. He's just long and just extends them arms and throws that chest out. Covers a lot of ground. Cougars have seven losses on the season. Five of them were two points games. One of them was a three point game. They have been in every contest. Even their defiance loss was a close game. Here's a three goes out of the corner by Bergman. Got it. Caden Bergman lights the lamp. He's got 10. That's his second three ball. They got time to make one more run. Here's Phillips. And he skates down the floor, passes the ball. And Pratt, oh, what a wow, rebound. what a rebound and what a power move inside. Point 23 and four for him. You know what, Hayden Pratt can play on my team. You betcha. Another one by Bergman. Bowers goes high to get that rebound, tips it to himself. Kick out, this will be Link for three. That time, Bikey gets the rebound. This is Bergman in the corner again. Bikey looks. Skip pass. Bergman this time goes to the basket. His floater goes over. Pratt tipped up. Bowers tips. And finally, Gunter gets the rebound. Two on two, and Phillips challenges and goes challenging. Bikey and Bikey blocks the shot. We'll go the other way. Bergman wanted that one, couldn't get it off before the defense got to him. Here's Beike with four minutes to go in the basketball game. Beckman kick out pass. Link wanted to shoot it and couldn't get his hands on the basketball well enough. Yeah, nice little dribble drive to the baseline with a kick out there by Beckman. 24 from Pratt. He's going to give it up, and they're going to run a little clock this time. St. Henry has just two team fouls in half. They could be very aggressive defensively and not put the Cougars on the foul line. Here's Pratt. A couple of good passes, and Aiden Pratt's got 26. 31 for him last night, 26 tonight. That's a pretty good weekend. That's a real good weekend by that young man. We still have three and a half minutes to go in this one. Steele. Gunter heads the other way. He goes off glass, scores, and dry, and the one opportunity as the foul will go to Hayden Beckman. Garrett Gunter. That is just his sixth point this evening, but he has controlled things so well offensively tonight. Profit winner of the basketball game. Like St. Henry makes multiple changes as Gunter goes to the free throw line. He only averages seven points a game, but he averages almost six assists. And I bet he's close to that tonight, Darren. He's put some phenomenal numbers up tonight. And he bounces that free throw in, point seven. That will allow. Is that Smith checked in for him? Schaefer, I mean, checked in for him, right? It did. Schaefer yes, checked in. Yes, it was in. Schaefer. It's a 20-point lead. Cougars on a roll here. Put off to the rim. Reverse layup scores. He's got 16 after having 14 in the opening half. Boy, what a high IQ play because oh. he knew, he knew that Pratt was on his backside and he shielded himself and got it up on the square and finished. Here's Caden Smith to inbound to basketball. He will lob it ahead to Carson Smith. And he finds profit in the corner. Smith inside, tried to pass it to Wessel. Wessel was thinking offensive rebound. Yep, had his hands down. If he'd had him up, he probably would have had her and had him Bergman reduce. from the volleyball line. That ball will be tipped out of bounds by Bowers. Nope, he tipped it off the hand of Carson Smith. Here comes Garrett Gunter back in the game. Good hustle by Bowers right there. Coaches love to see it. 2.45 to go, down 18, and you're still going after it. Pass goes out front to Link. Good defensive play by Schaefer. He's sure going to go was. two on one the other way. And wisely brings it back out. Good play by the junior defensively, and then not forcing things on the offensive end. Gunter, two and a half to go. JV game tonight was won by St. Henry, 58-38. St. Henry's had flourishes this evening, but on a consistent basis, it's been Van Wert tonight. 
Pratt gives it up. Here's Wessel in the corner. He measures a three. Schaefer rebounds, goes off glass and scores. Caden Schaefer's first basket. Good job by Schaefer catching yep. that ball and keeping it high and finishing. Didn't bring it down, didn't dribble it. And a 20 point lead. Catching me by surprise, Darren. I thought this was going to be a wire to wire game. Oh, yeah. Cougars have played so well tonight. Bowers gets it tipped loose by Pratt. Gunter runs it down in the sideline, and we're going to bring it up. Well, you know what coaches yeah. say, by the end of January, Ooh. early February, you want to be playing your best basketball. Well, that's a good pass from Schaefer. Ends up in Profit's hands. He becomes a double-figure scorer. Right before that, Coach Laudick yelled layups and free throws, and they got a layup. Putoff gets his strip loose, but Bowers gets it back, and he finishes. Good Evans play. got 13. Good play by that young man. Hung with it. Pratt brings it up. Here's Schaefer. Just threw that nice pass a moment ago. Gunter inside, gets a strip from behind. And Bowers will head the other way with a minute to go. Put off goes baseline. It's cut off by Wessel. Here's Bowers for three. Wessel rebounds. And Coach Laudick wants to get some guys in off the bench. He's going to bring in the number 23. That is Connor Campbell. He brought in, uh, let me see, try to get everybody's name here. 24 popped in off the bench. It's going to be a short timeout. He just wants to get guys into the game. Christopher Berkey checked in for the home team. Dominic Schwartz checked in. Haggerty, I believe, is in for Haggerty, thank you very much. Trying to catch all the names and numbers here with under a minute to go. They're going to stay in that zone. This will be a really good performance this evening for the Cougars. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing the final numbers here by our partner that's been pro providing us throughout the contest. Cougars playing a little pitch and catch out front. See if they run this one all the way down or not. There's a jumper out of the corner. Big offensive rebound there. Was. And this will bring this one to a close. The Van Wert Cougars will come into St. Henry and Kind of ruin their final night celebration of 15 years, 100 years of high school basketball as they will take a 72-52 victory over the homestanding St. Henry Redskins. That means that St. Henry will drop to 9-10 and 10 on the season. They are still 5-3 and three in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Van Wert will go to 12-7 and seven on the season. They are 3-4 and four in the conference. Darren, uh, you, you talked a little bit about a tournament draw coming up. You know, Liberty Benton is where Van Wert will go. They're in that district. The sectionals there are at Lima Senior and Paulding. There are 12 teams. The uh, D4 sectional this year is where you will find uh, the uh, St. Henry Redskins going to Wapak. Their sectionals are in Coldwater and in St. Mary's. And so we got tournament draw action tomorrow. We've got our selection show coming up on Wednesday night. What does the road to Columbus look like? Get the most in-depth analysis here from the coaches this Wednesday night at 9 p.m. The selection show is presented by Layfield Welding and Industrial Supplies only on WSM. That is Wednesdays at 9 p.m., this particular Wednesday at 9 p.m. And Paul Hemmelgarten got you some stats. What jumps off the board at you real quick here, Darren? Final numbers for the Cougars, 34 of 57 from the field for 59%. Didn't shoot it exceptional well behind the arc. But, however, when you win by 23 of 15 for 20%, one free throw converting it tonight. 32 on the glass, 10 of those at the offensive end, 22 assists, 11 steals, only 10 turnovers, and five of those partner coming to first quarter. 12 bench points, 15 second half or second chance points, and 16 off of turnovers. Hey, let me interrupt you really quick. They sure. had how many turnovers? 10. Uh, me, how many uh, assists? Assist, 22. And how many total baskets do they have? 34. How about that? That's a really good ratio. Thank you very much. Let's go to the St. Henry numbers then. St. Henry, final numbers, 21 of 57 for 36%. 8 of 25 from beyond the arc, 32%. 2 of 6 to charity strike. 
28 rebounds, 13 of those at the offensive end, 15 defensive, 10 assists, 6 steals, 15 turnovers, 18 bench points, 12 second chance points, and points over, or points, excuse me, off the turnovers, 8. Thank you very much for doing that, Darren, for Paul Hemelgarn for getting those numbers to us. St. Henry quarter score 16, 14, 12, and 10. They were led in scoring by Curtis Putoff. He had 16, including four threes. Caden Bergman had 10, including a pair of threes, and a pair of threes for Evan Bowers, part of his 13 points this evening. Van Wert Cougars quarter scores of 21, 21, 15, and 15. They were led in scoring by Aiden Pratt tonight, 26, 13 from Carson Smith, 10 from A.J. Prophet, 7, Garrett Gunter, 6, Nate Phillips, and a pair and a basket for Caden Schaefer. One no, more number, Darren? Well, you you asked, you, you was curious about the assists by the players. Yes. Carson Smith, 5, 1 turnover. Luke Wessel, 4 assists, no turnovers. Uh, Garrett Gunter, 4 assists. Uh, Nate Phillips, 4 assists. Uh, Caden Schaefer coming off the bench, three assists, no turnovers. How about that? They had a really good evening passing the basketball around tonight. Van Wert goes to 12 and 7. St. Henry drops to 9 and 7. Uh, excuse me, 9 and 10 on the season. I want to thank the athletic director here, Dennis Wendell. We also want to thank Eric Rosenbeck, who was kind enough to do an interview with us about what tonight meant for the 100th anniversary of this particular school tonight. We appreciate him as well. It's been a long day for our crew today. Cameron Stanton. And uh, Kelsey Beimer have been to Fort Laramie, and they've been here to do a game, and we really appreciate their work this evening. Megan Sherrick will edit this together back at the station. Our sponsors tonight have been Charles Rivers and Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima and in Wapak. For Darren Garrett, for <laughs> Darren Gilbert, it's been a long day for us, too. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> it's been a 72-52 <laughs> win tonight for Van Wert. You've been watching high school basketball on WSN. <laughs>